in the studio that would yeah. be great, yeah. So hello, we're, I'm coming up to you from Dickensia. I started already, I was a bit nervous. So uh, here we've got a lovely group of people ready for the weekend. No, the week. This is Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and Hope is behind the camera there doing the time. So we'll be told in how long have I got now? Maybe only 10 minutes, 15. 16? 16 minutes. So something's going to happen on here. So you're very welcome. And you're very welcome. Oh, so I was just saying that the paper, or sorry, that it's kind of warm enough in here now so that maybe the, the green will start drying. And I'd quite like to um, sometimes work back in or to show you how I would work back into the, um, to the green to kind of model things. Even at this early stage, you can start to make sense of the um, foliage through using your kitchen paper as a drawing tool, kind of. And I would make it into a kind of shape that's a bit like a drawing tool, I suppose, you know, so that it's not flailing everywhere. And then with some water on the tip of it, um, you can kind of eat back in to some areas. Now I'm taking a little bit of scrub in here because I've left it a while before I left it. And sometimes you'll find that you can really easily lift it off. And other times it's, um, it's a bit trickier. You know, when it dries, it gets a little bit tricky. Okay. So some of the edges kind of feels like it's a nice way to extend them, but actually, I could even do with extending that green a little bit more. And maybe with the colour that's on the brush, and where did I just paint this room? <laughs> <laughs> just do this. With the colour that's on the brush, you know, you could maybe put on something that oh, feels Feels like those small leaves extending into the space, you know. Don't worry too much, they're always very forgiving about the place, you know. Because it has gone on. It's a little bit there, yeah. And then, I mean, yeah. Oh God. It's okay. It's coming off. Yeah. I can do the bit on the wall. Can I borrow some of it? Can yeah, I borrow some of it? Yeah, yeah. Can I do on the wall too? <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's a bit different now if it was a wee bowl there, you know, if it was a bit, a bit longer. Is there a wee bit on there? Yeah, there's a wee bit on the next one. Underneath your cup. Oh, yeah, and then look at the way it Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But we can hold up the paper for a shield, you know. And if you want, I can be there as your shield holder. Let me know. Because it is exciting to have the fluidity as well as the scumbled. This would be called scumbled on, dry paint scumbled in, you know, pushed in. So the um, first bit you were using without any water, did you just use straight paint on the brush? Yeah, so the brush was... Uh, that's a good question. I can't remember if the brush had a little bit of water. Okay. Uh, I think it probably was dry. I think it was dry. I think it just different. took it straight out, yeah. yeah. I, it would definitely be worth um, erring on the side of keeping it drier than wetter than you want the cross hatched thing. So you could start, so maybe just do it with this brush that is dry and see. Um, so sometimes, yeah, like this is dry now, but I'm having to kind of push it in a little bit. Um, and that's mostly all true green would be really there. Mm -hmm. So you can see that, um, I suppose that, yeah, what you could do is you could wet the brush a bit, dry it with your paper towel, so that it's damp, but it's not dripping wet. Mm -hmm. And that way then you can pick up enough paint and it'll be viscous enough to move around, you know. So here we are now. What's going to happen next, I wonder? I think we need something for the, that lovely red, the red pot. And the exciting things mm. for later on too. I'm just remembering, uh, remembering that the kind of fun that this is. I think that cadmium red might be a good colour for the it is. I don't know where. Think about that. Let's we'll see if we could roll some, some of that on maybe for the eyes. I mean that might be a bit bright now because it's going to be in shadow. But for a start. I think it'll be quite nice. And maybe we could put some um, even some collage in there. 
Can see that the darks are better represented with thinner paint. Yeah. And I think maybe we could do with putting a touch of orange onto that as well, you know. Because it does seem to me that it's quite orangey. I hope I hope I was gonna say I hope I haven't lost my um my bit of paper. Which I'll also stick on. And you know, as you're working, you could stand back as well and just um, maybe consider what you want to do next. I'm throwing you everything at this poor vase. I'm going to lift that off because I don't want anything on it. All right. How did that happen there? No, <laughs> that's very red, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't mean it to be so red. Okay. I mean, so much, you know, anyway, that's all right. So I'm going to use the kitchen paper again now in order to lift off something of the shape of that. Not too kind of, not going into it in too much detail, but just lifting it off a bit. And I might actually let it, with the runs coming through it and things, and just let it alone for a while, forget about it kind of, and go somewhere else. And I think that somewhere else it'll go, hmm, maybe the tabletop. So the kitchen and um, masking things I find really handy to explain things like um, an edge or something so that you can freely paint the tabletop in and um, turn left. Oh, so you can freely paint the tabletop in, you know, without having to be careful to get the, the edge. I like to put something down there to describe the edge. And it's helpful to have. If you've got one of these palettes, you might want to tear off one sheet and put it on the table and put all your colour out there. And then you might hold the other one in your hand like that so you can mix the colour and you can see the colour you're aiming for as you're making it on there. But sometimes, all of it, you, might, you might find that the only thing for it is to just use the paint straight from the tube onto your paper. You know. I think maybe it's lemon yellow that goes, um, that these colours want to be, these flowers up here want to be lemon yellow, I think. I have more paint in the other bags, so I don't know. Lemon yellow, but I think it needs to, to have a little bit of um, the cadmium yellow in it. Do you know I do videos on YouTube sometimes, and um, somebody kindly sent me a wireless microphone anonymously because they were tired of me not being able to find my microphone <laughs> and I didn't plug it in. So I just wanted to say, I am using your microphone. If you, got, if you gave me a lot of thank you for that. Um, I just forgot to put it in this morning. And I think I'm loud enough here because I'm talking to you. Yeah. Okay, so it was a nice surprise in the post to get that. So I've mixed um, cadmium, cadmium yellow and um, lemon yellow together to make that colour there, for those ones that are kind of shining up. And then there's, oh yeah, yeah, I was going, was I going to do the table? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about the table. Or, and maybe just seeing as I've got this on my hand, you know, I might go and do, with my eyes half closed, I'm noticing that one side of that kind of yellow gerbera is, um, is quite bright, it's kind of hitting the, uh, maybe the, um, you know, lemon yellow tones. Whereas the rest of it, and it extends further than the vase does, so I'm bringing it over a bit further. The rest of it is in shadow a little bit more, so I, I can afford to let that be a little more subdued on that side. And you know, eventually, in fact, right now, when I put in a little touch from the centre, I was going to say, you know, there are ways of defining the flower a little bit more clearly without labouring over it for ages. So I'm going to use. A combination of paints grey. 
that descended into fingers fairly quickly today. And usually it's brushes until the end. Um, Haynes Gray and Raw Umber. Yeah, Raw Umber and Haynes Gray. So there's a colour that will represent something dark in the centre. And if you've got a dark centre, you're kind of halfway there, you know. I mean, we can, we can um, discuss more later on about modelling the individual flowers. But I think we're concerned in the first half hour at least to keep the energy of the thing alive and to keep, um, and for your focus to be on pulling out the feeling of the flowers and the feeling of the colours and this, the character of the whole kind of joyful splurge of them like um, individual modelling at the, at the early stages. So I suppose it's a good idea to have something with the yellow ochre, something to describe the tabletop, something to describe the vase, something to describe the foliage, and maybe a few individual dominant flowers before you stop for a break in like 40 minutes. So, and, and see that as a kind of a, I think sometimes, rather than feeling like that's pressurizing, sometimes I think it's helpful to have some restriction, a restriction of time, a restriction of material, a restriction of, um, but we don't have restrictions on materials really. <laughs> But uh, you know, having having a restriction on time encourages you to, to select what's important, and it means that you use your time more efficiently if you know that you've you know okay, so I need to get on. I can't ruminate over the table be, being exactly the right colour. I just move on and do something on the floor now, and um, and that's always good. So keeping the forward momentum going is always a good idea. Okay, so I thought the yellow ochre was the kind of closest colour to the tabletop. And especially when it's spread out, I think. There's probably some colour in this now. So I'm going to use the cleaner brush. This is a pretty big one here. Let's try this on there and see. Huge brushes. It's a big one, isn't it, that one? Yeah, you can borrow any of them. Now there's, a, there's a fair few of the big ones. Yeah, but it doesn't really... I, I like having a handle. Um, I like having a handle and I can kind of use it like a weapon. <laughs> or maybe it's, I don't know, a tool or something. I have to say. Yeah, it's interesting how the newly painted wall is slightly kind of causing, but there's maybe no harm in that. That is my restriction today. Variety, variety of colour, variety of brush mark, using different paint tools to make your marks to create variety on the surface, um, and you know the dry against the wet marks. And I think you too want to. I think you too would like to, you know, try and keep yourself surprised by what's by what's happening on the paper, and um, best you can remain kind of physical too, like moving backwards and forwards. Take it, take the heat off. Um, yeah. Let me just. Okay. This one. And I thought I would do there now, just maybe using the paint grey even, just to deepen some of the tones. I think that was a bit of a, a bit of a cop out using the paint grey really. That was a bit, a bit too kind of dark there, and just because it was being. I wanted to get there faster. But with my eyes half closed, yeah, all of this area is really significantly darker than, you know, the bits and pieces here. And like we can, this is maybe an opportunity too, in my last couple of minutes, know, three minutes. Um, you look like you really mean business, I hope. If you're doing your job very good, isn't it? Okay. So it might be an opportunity to show this, the shape of the spaces between the petals, do you know? Um, in order to kind of help to identify this as a gerber more clearly. It is a gerber, isn't it? Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> so just I've, what I've done there is using the flat, these flat brushes that I encouraged you to buy, and I have some if you want to borrow them, if you don't have them, um, to make your colour that you want to use. And then maybe scoop it up so that you've got a little ridge of it that you can turn over and lay down so it'll clearly cover. I can show you this individually as well. So that it'll clearly cover the triangle of space between the 
petals and you don't have to keep painting at it, you know, because I think there's something about the crisp edge on the light side, especially of a flower, that helps us to, to know that it's um, really stinging out in the light there. And it might be that, um, like I'm not paying very much attention here now, it might be that later on as well you could even stick on some, um, you might find some paper. That would be the colour that you're looking for on the flower. Is it three minutes to 25 minutes? Or three minutes to 20 minutes? Get to one and a half minutes until you've had 20 minutes. Say that again? The timer will go off for 20 minutes in one and a half minutes. Oh, okay, okay. So I have a little bit more. So there's a little bit of uh, lemon yellow paper. I find sometimes sticking on the light bits on the flower can, can enhance the feeling of brightness of it. Um, because it's a bit like, um, I often say about Rembrandt's paintings, you could pick them up by the nose because the paint was so thick in the light areas. You know, that, that was a joke, obviously. I don't think anyone ever did really pick up his painting anymore. But the, so to use the thicker paint in the light areas or the collage paper in the light areas helps to really give it a feeling of catching the light and the thinner paint for the darker areas seems to me to be helpful. Um, so I mean, you could just even get a touch, you could even get a touch of the paint straight from the tube as well, like, and just put it on, because I feel like now that I've put the dark in between the petals on that side, it doesn't work so much. Now that I've put the dark in between the petals on that side, oh my God, it's really not what I've come out. I think that I could heighten the light on the, on the petals themselves. There we are. So maybe my baby finger is a good size for that. You know. And obviously there's no obligation to use your fingers or hands or anything here now. There's plenty of brushes. No excuse for it. Last five minutes. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so you get the idea. You put your thicker paint on. To re-emphasize, re-establish the light if you want to as well. Uh, or as I said, bits of paper. Um, oh yeah, oh, I put my fingers up, good. Okay. So now I suppose it might be um, an opportunity to look back again then at the days and how it, how it meets the table. Maybe, it's, maybe it would be helpful to have the collage there. Not really. Or there. Or maybe I'll just reserve that for the flowers later on. Kind of work there. That's good. So do you know that paper is not? It's actually um, a bit of a painting that I peeled off. So it's this paper I've used before. You know, this painting was painted on that kind of paper, and I peel off the shiny, um, shiny bit of that, so that it's nice and thin. And that can be quite nice to um, actually look a bit brighter colour. I think that would work on that side there. So I'll just put a bit of PVA glue on here. Um, like that. Yeah, I think that's all right. I'm just going to put that bit down at the bottom as well. There. You can do that. Put some glue on it though. I'm thinking there was a couple of drips. Oh yeah, they're dried. Sometimes when the drips run down through it and you catch them before you, they fully dry, you get a nice kind of rivulets going through the paint that can, can be kind of pleasing. Um, and I was thinking as well, maybe, if, um, actually in your case, I would have the water within easy reach. Have everything within easy reach of yourself and I put all that stuff over there if I just, or I leave it somewhere where everyone can access it. Um, yeah, it's no harm that that's kind of dull, that colour of the brush, because I think it needs to curve under and create it and be, you know, a bit of a shadow there. The other thing before, before the bell goes, and um, I want to find a couple of other things to say to you here now. So this is titanium white. Um, can I say that? Or, yeah, like you'd be putting on 
the other things I think as well that you could use for these highlights later on with the paper flat on the ground probably or it's just sometimes you could touch it with your finger and it will retain it so it won't run um, but I can talk about that later um, let's see what this colour's like close enough I think to that colour that's there it's a bit of a dark version of it I think Oh, that's sticking out there and you'd be kind of doing your best to find the position of things as truthfully as you can like this is lower than that flower to me it maybe sticks out a little bit further when i've got it um you know so just to kind of find the position of things there's another one up there that's kind of similar but it's only got a few bits of that pink in it from where i'm looking but it's just to kind of almost give myself a bit of order in the chaos to let myself have some um, stepping stones through the, the flowers um, and to locate things where I see them to be, knowing that you can move them, it's not like set in stone or anything. Um, and I'm going to put down at some point now because I want to explain another way of capturing the shape of the spaces between the leaves and between the flowers. You know, I mean, the background. Yeah, I think there's a one inch brush, is fine. Um, I wanted to show you another way of explaining the shape of the spaces through to the light behind. From where I'm standing, there's light behind the flowers. And so if I wanted to sculpt more clearly something here, let's see. Maybe just either side of the stem or something. There. No, and then you can find little bits that are shimmering from the from behind. And it helps to, to really observe the shape of that part and then be able to explain it by the paint coming up to meet it. And then there's maybe a little leaf hanging down there. And sometimes you want to explain the edge of things and other times you want to let it alone. So it's kind of, again, the contrast of having clarity at the edge and free breathing at the edge, you know? So, um, so you'll, you'll stand back and discern where it is. As I was noticing there now that I haven't enough green, I know that the bell is down there. Um, so just be one second. I was kind of wanting to pick out the greens that are coming out here. There's a horizontal leaf that I've not really put, put in position. Because it's just a spray that's there. So I would um, go back and put in something there that I, that I can then eat into later. So I would say that to you in general. I think it's helpful to, to work bigger first, to expand and make bigger marks because you can always eat into them. Whereas if it's a bit small, you're having to continually bridge and kind of create bigger shapes and somehow it feels less exciting than starting with a broad sweeping statement and then having to kind of respond to that. Um, so, and when you don't, like I didn't start in the broad sweeping, you know, I didn't have enough um, green there for that. So you can always go back and do it like it's fine. But it's good just to remember to err on the side of extending, um, expanding rather than contracting, I suppose. And then you can work into it with whatever uh, shapes you want, you know, to, to create the um, character of that leaf. And there's plenty of paper towels over there. I should have brought over more because I want to print out the Stencils too. I'm having too much fun here now. You might be getting excited as well. But I did want to just mention that we have stencils. Um, will I just do one thing with the stencils and then you can head off and we'll start? So hope don't let me go on for longer than five minutes more. I'll just put a few minutes in it. Three minutes, even better. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just looking at the shapes of the stencils and looking at the shapes of the leaves. I think this is closest to what I want to do here. There are some bits in there, maybe, maybe that one. There are some bits in there that are really quite um, light, light green. And so I'm going to pull out some soft green. I'll show you what it looks like. Soft green looks like this. And you know, take any colours that you want. Now there's two bags of paints over there if you've, if you've not got any colours. Mm -hmm. Feel free to take any that are uh, here. Soft green. I'm looking at for the latest form on the on those things. Mm -hmm. 
and just this kind of yellowish green happening. And I think maybe I might even put a bit of uh, cadmium yellow, I'd say, into that to give it a bit more. because I want it to stand out over the dark green that's there. That's just a bit excited. I don't know if I've put too much white in there maybe. But let's just try it. Yeah. yeah. And like I'm not really looking at anything individual here. I'm just noticing there's some light here going up there and then there's a little flash of something white down there too. You know. And maybe as I've, as I've started, I'm going to use a little trigger happy. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know that, that green that's over there looks mm -hmm. to me to be very similar? There are just some parts of that are nice and yellowy light. Yeah, and then, so let's get from there. The idea. And you could always use a darker green to keep it. You've gone too light anywhere, you could use a darker green elsewhere, but down there. And um, then I still got seconds on the top, and there's a, do something with a darker green, so it's pretty good anyway. Um, so, I don't feel like green different. So, maybe as an extension of that stem that I tried to make earlier. And even just some bits and pieces of something there. Just to kind of start to, you can ease up the edge of things by using the stencils. And, and as soon as you feel like you're getting stuck down a rabbit hole, pick up something, do something general somewhere else. Let go of the feckin' struggle and do something general elsewhere. As soon as you know that feeling of like a dog chasing a scent and getting stuck <laughs> down the rabbit hole, you want to kind of do instead the thing that will give you a feeling of freedom and lightness and the stencils bring that in and the different brushes, the colour and you know and torn paper like sometimes I'll just show you there um, when I was painting some flowers here the other day I thought the quickest way to describe the leaves there was just to stick on a bit of wallpaper you know so there are times when you know keep yourself open to opportunities and things that um, things that's going on. And there's two. There's a couple of kind of beginnings of something similar there. And you know, every painting will have a different beginning. And each time you approach the same subject, even you might do something totally different. So there's the stencil used in the in the the jug, uh, the pot there. Whereas this is all collage, really. Um, and then there's some collage pieces on here with that purple paint. And the background is highlighted, whereas the tabletop is highlighted here. You know, so you you have the you're the conductor of your piece of work. You decide what goes where and how you how you embark upon the, the adventure of it. <laughs> you know, so and feel under no pressure either with all these kind of exciting words. Now you don't have to feel like you're shackled and although it mightn't be any harm to have that sense of going on a bit of a, a, bit of a voyage with it. So when you see this. Going back to your space, when you see the work and see see the flowers and see your your um, piece of paper, make a decision like you did earlier about the size you want it to be. You could you could change your mind, you know, all the way through. You have the option of changing your mind about things too, and even having two paintings on the go would be fine, you know. So if you're right-handed, I recommend you look out the left side so that you're open to the flowers and open to your painting. You're not looking over your hand. These things are suggestions for what I, what I find comfortable. If you don't find them comfortable, that's fine. Looking out the left side, um, and then trying to have everything within easy reach. So this is a bit of chaos here now, you, you know, and for the demonstration, I suppose it's like that. But maybe you'll have a little bit more of a kind of an orderly table, and be sure that you can, be sure that you can reach your water and your kitchen paper all the time, and regularly change your water. And after 30 minutes, we'll stop and have a little break, and, by that time, hopefully, you'll have something to describe the tabletop, something to describe the pot, and something to describe the flowers. You know, the general shape of them. 
How does that sound, mm -hmm. John? Mm -hmm. Great. Right. Right. Okay. And take it or leave it. Any of this, take it or leave it. You're, you're in charge. It's permission for yourselves to just do whatever it is you want. For feck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> you're not given that opportunity, do you? Thanks for watching. Thanks. <laughs>